Hello, today I'm going to be going over USD scale and specifically instancing. So, for example, in this quick animation here, I, if you look at my scene graph, I've got a prototype sprint and then here are all the actual trees. So, what's happening here is I've got a couple different files. So, I've got my tree definition, so that's a single one of my trees, and then I've got an orchard file, and that's the instanced so that that basically just contains um, the positions that I'm moving them to the scales and any rotations so that's the um, what's stored in the orchard file and then I have the animation file and that's the largest file at 13 megabytes and that's actually containing the deformations um, of the joints on the skeletons so you can see there's rotation scales and translation and then the joint hierarchy here and so what's happening is this prototype's geometry prim is referencing um, that's being referenced in and this the tree file and then after that I am just referencing the animations over and then those have been binded with a relationship up here and then after that that gives me this animation now you notice even with um, this view of trees only nine trees I'm still getting pretty slow pay playback in the viewport, um, just with nine trees, and these are under 50,000 polygons each. So if we go to an, uh, a larger scene, so this is 200 of those trees, what you'll notice is that uh, the playback is incredibly slow. Now I need to actually reference the animations over. So the playback is super super slow you see it takes multiple seconds per frame so it's it's not very um, interactive but that might not be a big deal for a lot of people because any simulation you're going to be doing is likely in SOPS or will be in SOPS um, or not it won't be in LOPS and Solaris so you know it's not actually going to impact your ability to develop how the simulation looks this is just about it'll have maybe slower load times but the benefit is your disk size is super low so on the 200 trees the tree file is only five megabytes the you know actual uh, instance points or the locations that's only 64 kilobytes and then the animations for 200 trees skeletons is 141 megabytes so it's really lightweight on file in comparison to just having the raw mesh data baked out um, and it's fairly uh, fairly organized so now I'm gonna get into how this actually works so inside of SOPS what I've got here is I've been just using the labs basic tree tools taking the curves and then I'm just doing some stuff to make sure it's all one connected piece so if I go here and I select this you'll see It's all one piece, so it's all connected. And then here, I'm just off uh, writing, doing the bone capture. Here, I'm using uh, bone capture by Harmonic because I found it gave a lot better results, but it's definitely slower than just using bone capture proximity. So that's just a trade off. And then after that, I'm just using the agent from Rig, which will create an agent from my skeleton. And here, I'm using a lower res, or not lower res, I'm deleting some of the finer branches because um, I don't need those for the rig necessarily. And then I'm just adding, creating the rig. I'm assigning a path so that will, this path attribute will define the primitive that it's imported, that's imported into Solaris. And then I'm assigning the uh, geometry over here to the agent. And then this is going into my output node right here. So all I've got here is my rig, which is my skeleton, and then my geometry. And each of the ge geometry has a different name on it. So I've got bark and I've got leaves. So that's why it's splitting here. And then if I go in here, you'll see I'll take a, I take a SOP import and I'm bringing in that out agent and I'm copying it just into the editable, editable layer. And I don't see anything here. And that's because what I've done is the first thing I'm doing is I'm uh, 
I'm setting the kind authoring to none just so it's not a component, uh, but that doesn't matter too much. But the important thing here is what I'm doing with the agents. I'm here, I'm saying create instant skeletons. So, and then I'm using the uh, restructure scene graph. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm deleting this. So you'll notice this, I'm actually getting rid of all of this. And right now, this skeleton, it's green. That's because it's referencing this. If we look at the the key right here, you see this means it has a composition arc. So it's referencing this skeleton prim right here. So I'm actually deleting that entire primitive right here. And then after this, I'm reparenting the skeleton um, to a new prim. And so restructure string graph is basically a non, it's a destructive way of working in USD, but it's still procedural. So it's nice. And since Houdini forces us to import, um, to get to access to USD scale, basically solely through agents, as far as I'm, I know, um, I'm basically finding myself having to do a lot of destructive stuff like this since we don't actually get very low level access to USD scale. And then the last thing here, I'm converting this to scale root. So a scale root prim is basically encapsulates all of the um, skinnable geometry. So this is going to have our skeleton and then our skin geometry in it. And then here, graph branches, another destructive thing. I'm, this time over here, you'll see I'm creating scale roots. So this time it's actually gonna bring in the geometry Notice this is bringing in, these two are bringing in from the same um, SOP. And if I just bring this out, you'll see if I switch this to create scale animations, it's only creating the animations. Cut. So that's about as low level access as we get. And then after that, I'm just setting the invisibility of the skeleton because I don't want to be seeing all these curves in the viewport. And then I'm just setting the leaves to be render only. And then I've just got the material assignments and I'm saving this out. So really quick, the reason why I'm doing some of this stuff up here is you'll notice if I click on the skeleton, it's got um, this thing called, actually this doesn't appear to have it, but if, uh, You'll see it's got this thing, it's a uh, relationship. So yeah, you see it's red, so that stands for relationship. And it's re uh, that relationship is with this prim right here. So it's the animation prim. So the scale animation source relationship is on the skeleton prim. And this um, defines the USD scale animation, which is right here, that contain that is going to deform the skeleton. So the reason why I've got it set up like this is basically because I don't, because I'm going to use this tree with instancing, I don't want to import this with a scale animation already on it, if that makes sense. So let me go down and try to explain more. So here I'm bringing in my tree, which I wrote out at this USD ROP right here. My skeleton has no relationships, as you can see, no, uh, animation source relationship. And that's good. That's what I want. If this did have an empty animation source relationship, for example, let's say I can actually just write this out right now. So let's go ahead and set up the skeleton. So if I set this to create skeletons, you'll see this has the animation source. And here I can just do a restructure scene graph. And then I want to just delete the animation. So I'll remove that and then I think I can just plug this into here like so. Okay. Yeah. So see, this has an empty scale animation. And if I save this to the disc and then I go down here and I reference in the orchard, what you should see is on the skeleton. Okay. It's got this empty scale animation source, What you'll see is now when I go and I reference over the animations, I don't get any animation. And the reason for this is um, this is a property of, um, or, or not a property, but something when you're working with instancing is really powerful. So, um, and it's not specific to USD scale, but basically I'm defining the animation source here. You'll notice on these X forms. So here I'm actually defining 
the connection with this and you're saying you're probably wondering okay it's not on the skeleton so how does the skeleton know and what's happening is that this relationship is inheriting down the scope of this primitive until um, onto all the, ske the, the skeletons below it but since this already has a skeleton animation source relationship this is the one that's being used and this has no um, no target paths so that's why we're not getting any any animation so I need to go back and use this instead and I did not plug these in like so all right and now I will get the animation. All right, so that's a quick um, thing that you might be running into. And again, that's sort of just because Houdini doesn't give us low level access to working with USD scale. Um, you know, you just kind of have to have to work around that um, or use Python. All right, and so I'll go over, I'm bringing in the tree, I'm instancing it and then inside the instancer uh, let's talk about how I'm actually doing the simulation so here I've just got a line and then I'm scattering the points just doing a basic scattering setup um, here I'm setting the path for every point and that's what's giving me this hierarchy right here so I can actually create the primitives in the point instancer and you'll see here I've got instance base name which is this and then I've got um, using the path attribute so that's what's creating these prims um, right here for me and then this is the output for the points that it's scattering on and then right here I'm creating an ID that's stored on the point value so this is the scattered points right here and then just get rid of all of this and then here I'm scattering the rig so this ID attribute on the points is getting transferred to the rigs and then I'm um, or actually and then I'm so I'm bringing in the uh, the tree rig from lops so that's this right here I'm bringing in that reference and then I'm pinning the bottom three points and then I'm assigning the glue to animation attribute which I'm going to use you can ignore this for now going to use inside the dop net and I don't really know anything about dops or honestly agents to be to be honest so don't worry, don't uh, concern yourself with the visuals. But here I'm doing all the simulation, just using a wire solver, because um, it keeps the topology of the, the rig the same. So that's my quick simulation. I'm just caching it. And this is um, a bit iffy. So if someone knows a better way, I would you know be glad to know. So what I'm doing in here is I'm isolating the current uh, tree with the ID and since we have to import via agents into Solaris I'm first transforming this back to the root so this is going to make it relative to the um, to the actual USD asset and then I'm creating a motion clip of the total sequence length so this is going to store you see this is the whole animation um, basically it's trails and then I'm assigning that to the agent clip and then here I'm creating an agent from rig so I'm creating an agent from the rig and I'm just um, and then I'm giving it a name or a path attribute which is um, going to give me this hierarchy essentially and then after that here I've got a file cache because this is actually this is all static since the data has been baked into this motion clip and then in here I'm actually I, I found that I've have to set the clip time and this has to be time dependent in order for USD to actually write out it doesn't um, seem to write out motion clips unless I set a, the current clip and animate it with the clip time value otherwise USD doesn't seem to write it out so you notice the orchard output is a static it's only one frame and then the animations so that's the out animation clip so that's this right here 
is dynamic, so this is the frame range. And on here, I'm creating only the scale animations, so that way I'm only bringing in the animations. And then here's that path attribute that I was talking about earlier. It's automatically creating this, so that way when I go and reference them over each other, the hierarchy automatically aligns and everything's set up. Oh, and real quickly for the, uh, the, anim the animation source relationship, what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing, I'm just using the asterisk wildcard to grab all of these primitives. And then I'm using the USD add relationship target, which uh, might not be the best practice because if you look at the USDA code, it does um, a little bit extra stuff. It creates a custom relationship and then prepends the target uh, because I'm assuming it we're not necessary. It's not uh, best practice to assign relationships with Vex, so you can also use Python, but it's just easier to loop over all the primitives using wildcards um, in Vex instead of Python. But if you're curious, uh, I thought I had a Python that's sitting around here somewhere, but you can basically do something like this to create uh, the relationships with Python. And instead of create relationships, so you'll notice that targets take a, takes a list. You can also use get relationship and then add target, I believe. And then this doesn't take a list because you're just adding a single target, add target. So that's really quick if you wanted to do that. All right, and I think that's mostly everything. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful.